You're listening to Retail Disrupted, a podcast that explores the latest industry developments and the trends that will shape how we shop in the future. I'm your host, Natalie Berg. Hello, and welcome back to Retail Disrupted. Today's episode is part of a special collaboration with the Richmond Retail and E-Commerce Directors Forum. Many of you know this is an event that I have chaired for the past few years, and I am thrilled to say that I will be chairing it again in April. We thought it'd be fun to give you a little sneak peek into some of the topics that we'll be discussing. And so to do that, we have asked a few retailers to come on the podcast. This is going to be the first of three collaborative episodes that will launch in February. So make sure you come back and check out the others. Today, I am super excited to have Sarah Welsh with me on the podcast to talk about women in retail. Sarah is the CEO of retail at N Brown Group. She spent almost 17 years at Oasis as managing director and has almost 30 years of retail and brand experience across the UK high street. She's worked across multiple formats, digital, wholesale, franchise, and multi-channel. During her time at N Brown, Sarah has led her teams to create a more compelling, refreshed product and customer proposition for the three main investment brands within the group portfolio, Simply B, Giacomo, and JD Williams. I'm going to bring Sarah in in just a minute, but first, a quick word from Emma Doniger from Richmond Events. Thank you, Natalie, and thank you very much, Sarah. We're really happy to have you here today, and so thank you very much for your time. A little bit more about the Retail and E-Commerce Directors Forum. We're now in our 16th year and it'll be held once again at the Belfry Resort near Sutton Coalfield. We invite 150 senior retailers and 60 retail service providers, creating a personalised itinerary for everyone based on the people they wish to meet and the conference sessions they wish to attend. We have an absolutely fantastic lineup of C-suite retailers and industry speakers just waiting to share their expertise and knowledge with you. In addition to Sarah, we will have Jeremy Schwartz, ex-CEO, Body Shop, L'Oreal and Pandora, as well as Jan Marchant, Managing Director for Clothing and Home at Tesco, The Economist, Simon French, CEO, Nigel Oddy of American Golf and ex-House Fraser, Chris Brown, former Global Director of Ted Baker, Emma Watkinson, CEO and Founder of Silk Thread, plus so many more. We really do have an amazing lineup covering topics such as AI, customer loyalty, immersive digital experiences, sustainability and ESG, the Gen Z shopper, plus digital transformation lessons with Daniel Rouse, program director at UCL. We are nearly full to capacity, so if you'd like to join us, please do get in touch with Natalie quickly. Thanks very much. Sarah, welcome to the podcast. It's such a privilege to have you here with us, especially as a female retail leader talking about this hugely important topic. So thank you so much for taking the time and welcome to the show. Thank you, Natalie. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. A wonderful topic to uh, have the opportunity to talk to you about. So thank you for having me today. Oh, that's great. So we're going to cover a lot of ground and I'm, I'm just going to dive straight in. Absolutely. Now, retail, as we know, is a heavily female influence industry. Women control the vast majority of consumer purchasing decisions. Over half of the retail workforce is female. But when we look at who's leading the businesses in our industry, Mm -hmm. it's still predominantly men, white men even. And I think the good news is that the dial is now moving, right? So if you look at the latest DNI report from the BRC, that showed that 38% of all retail board positions in the UK are held by females. And that's up slightly, it's up from 32% just a couple of years ago. And I think if you look at what's happening with executive teams, it's a really similar pattern. So things are moving in the right direction, but many of us would argue that uh, change probably isn't happening quickly enough. So, So why do you think that is, Sarah? What are the biggest barriers to progress when it comes to getting women in leadership roles? I think, um, I mean, it's an interesting, it's an interesting one, Natalie, because I've been very fortunate to work with some great female leaders um, in my career in in the 30 years I've been in retail. And I 
acknowledge that, um, you know, at the top positions in the CEO and PLC board positions, there is a gap, uh, there's still a gap. But I think um, really some of the barriers I can think about so from a personal perspective um, that I've seen and I felt would be, I guess, confidence, self-belief and clear career plans. I think those are probably the three barriers that women often um, feel that they have, whether that's a reality, it's a reality to them. Yeah, and I think that, you know, that brings us to the whole um, idea of representation that, you know, I think younger women in retail need to see strong female leaders. They need to feel that, yes. um, you know, there is a path for them. There's a viable path and that they belong there. So I'm curious to know um, who over the years has inspired you? Who are some of your female retail heroes, if you will? Fabulous question, Natalie. And I've been so fortunate to have so worked alongside and for and with so many wonderful women. So it's really hard to boil it down. Um, and I continue to reach out to women as mentors and, uh, and guides because I think it's incredibly important to share experiences um, as we go. So, I mean, three that really stand out for me and one that um, I couldn't not acknowledge is my mother who at 80 years old isn't actually in the retail space but operates as an executive coach and is still um, very passionate about having a fulfilling and rewarding career in executive coaching. So I, I couldn't not mention her, but um, the three of note in the retail space would be um, my first, I guess, female boss, a, a lady called Jane Wolf, who um, ran Oasis when I joined. Um, and she is an amazing woman. And I remember in my interview, she was the first person to ever ask me about me. Um, what is your what do your parents do um what's your family like uh what's your husband like uh, how do you like to show up at work and no one had ever asked me about me before and it, i thought this is boy this is somewhere i really want to be part of um and you know jane really shaped the early stage of my career at oasis when i was promoted to buying director um my boss at the time was from a merchandising background and she suggested that I reach out to someone I admired in the industry and I reached out to Jane Shepherdson, who at the at that point in time was running Topshop. Um, and whilst I'd never worked for Jane, I'd heard so many wonderful things about her as a leader. And I just dropped her an email and she got straight back to me and said, of course, I'd be privileged to spend some time with you. And over the years, we've moved from sort of mentor, mentoree, mentee into a friendship that is long standing. And I, I, I can never thank Jane enough for um, the time she invested in me um, in those early stages. And then I guess latterly, um, Liz Evans, who was my CEO um, at Oasis Warehouse, was a wonderful believer in me. And she really unlocked something in my capability that I didn't even know I had. So, you know, at times I think she believed in me more than I believed in myself. She was my champion. Mm, um, well, that's so, so important, guess, isn't it? So important. So important. Um, you really can't underestimate that. Yeah. It's definitely. something I try and give to my teams because um, that recognition of you doing a great job or or even where you could go next and, you know, how your career progression could track, um, I think that's critical. Yeah, that actually brings us to, I think, a really interesting point, which is um, about nurturing future female business leaders, because yeah. just to kind of go back yeah. to some stats from the DNI report, which, by the way, is a really eye opening read, I would definitely recommend it. And I'll include a link in the show notes. But Fantastic. one of the um, more promising findings of the study was that there is a strengthening pipeline of female leaders. And the staff yes. I wanted to call out was that the proportion of women at direct reports level is now at 43%. So getting closer to yeah. that halfway mark and making progress. But I'm just curious to know, Sarah, at M. Brown, what are some of the ways that you nurture future leaders? 
Um, well, I think I'm very proud of the work we do here at M Brown, both in the retail space, but also as a as a business entirety. Um, you know, we're a business that has a financial services proposition, a strong data and tech um, infrastructure, and then the retail proposition. So multi multifaceted business whose purpose is to serve the underserved, whether through size, age or social demographic. So, you know, it's critical to us that our teams represent the inclusivity of our customer base. I think that's really, really crucial. So if I start with what we do in the retail space, um, and I think as you've referenced and you talked about in the, in the, in the entry, you know, we are lucky in retail. It's a hugely egalitarian career choice. There are no barriers, really, um, or should be no barriers to progress. Um, so across trading, marketing, um, product, um, there are a huge number of, of, of brilliant women um, working in the business. Um, and I'm really proud um, specifically to be supporting um, the school and college leaver apprenticeship schemes, which um, we're starting to really approach in a much more fundamental way. Um, we've increased from just four in March 22 to 18 today. And this is absolutely vital in attracting the next generation of female talent and leaders um, and giving opportunities for women of all backgrounds to enter the workplace that may have previously not had the opportunity to understand or do so. So, I mean, that's something we're hugely proud of. We've also just launched a female only mentoring program here at M Brown um, across all aspects of the business, uh, which I'm really excited about, um, which will give female um, leaders and colleagues an opportunity to learn from business leaders um, in the business to support them in their generation, um, the next generation of retail, to understand actually how they can progress and how they might want to think about their career choices, which is brilliant. And I guess on a purely personal level, I'm really passionate about supporting all colleagues, actually, not, not just female colleagues, but working with um, women who tend to be lacking in that self-belief around, you know, this is what you're great at. This is what I've experienced. This is how you could evolve. And just being really open and vulnerable, because um, I think... What I'm really joyous about is that um, leadership now embraces true vulnerability and authenticity and being fully transparent in a way that didn't really exist when I started out. So to succeed as a woman in, you know, 30 years ago, you had to, as people put it, act like a man. Mm. Um, now, I... I, I empathise with some of my brilliant male colleagues now because they're in a difficult position of how they can start to operate. But I think women are feeling much more comfortable with being open and honest and authentic and actually, you know, being able to say, I'm on childcare duty or my husband is on childcare duty and or we need to balance our, our, our lifestyle. Um, and I think those conversations are really important. Yeah, it is such a shift, as you say, and it's it's so nice to have that transparency and also be really open and 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 honest about some of the challenges that we all face as as women. Yes. And, you know, whether yeah. that's childcare or, um, you know, just balancing, you know, all the invisible labor and domestic duties. And, yes. you know, we wear a lot of hats. And so I think it's it's so nice to be able yeah. to hear, especially from someone like you, Sarah, and just acknowledge this so, so openly. So um, you touched on the next generation of retail, which brings us nicely to my next question around the future of retail and how you see that evolving. And I know that is a huge question. <laughs> so um, <laughs> just touch on some thoughts on sort of where you see things going within retail, but but especially, I guess, to bring it back to our topic around women in retail and how, you know, that might yeah. impact women in the future. You know, I, I guess one thing that sparked a thought was, um, you know, the, the rise of hybrid working, this hybrid way that we're living yes. and flexible working. And, yeah. you know, does that does that create more opportunities for women or maybe some challenges as well? But it'd be great to get your thoughts around that. Yeah, um, I mean, I think for us as a business, um, hybrid has been a real fundamental unlocker in terms of 
access to talent that may have otherwise not been um, able to operate within the space that we operate. You know, we're a 24 um, seven digital uh, retailer and the demands as with all retail careers are fast and furious. So um, retail is a hugely exhilarating and exciting space, um, but one which does, you know, does require a, a focus that with a certain relentlessness. Um, and I think what hybrid does is it enables a balance, if you like, between being present at home and being present at work. And it allows um, us to bring in talent uh, from areas of the country that are not local because, um, you know, some of our wonderful leaders in our business and our teams travel from London or from the Midlands or from Scotland and um, are doing a brilliant job. Um, I think it has opened access to us understanding as a retail environment that there are different ways of doing things. I mean, up until pre-COVID, I think most of us worked uh, nine till nine in an office somewhere in a city somewhere commuting at each side of the day and um, really when you think back now that was quite an archaic way of operating um, it took a pandemic and, to really um, kind of jolt us out of that didn't it didn't it because everybody said it's not possible we can't do the job in in a different way well guess what when we had to we're a very resilient bunch and we found ways of operating and and, and I certainly think for M Brown it's made us a better organization in lots of ways because um, you know we've we've embedded some new models and new ways of working in terms of agile that's required collaboration so we're very clear that when we come together physically it's for collaboration it's for ideas it's for innovation and when we're working remotely um, it's project based work it's focus time and um, you know it does cut down on on the commute time and it does mean that there's more productivity um, and of course in a cost of living crisis it's slightly more economical not getting the train or, or driving in or getting the tram five days a week so um, yeah. yeah I mean I think it's certainly opened out um, a different way of thinking about about our career choices and then in relation to the future of retail um, I just think it's such, I'm such a passionate retailer. I mean, I'm a, I'm an absolute generalist. Um, I'm an expert of nothing apart from the customer. And I think, um, I think with that, uh, comes endless opportunities within, within retail, new career choices, you know, data is a fundamental unlocker to understanding your customer in a digital business. Um, IT and IT infrastructures become critical in how you create pathways for your customer. Um, of course, wonderful store teams and um, operators, you know, um, our warehouse and distribution colleagues. Always there are, there are, there are choices to be made around how we do things. Um, and what I love about that, as I've said already, is the inclusiveness and the sort of openness to everybody. Um, it's not a career where you have to have a degree. Um, if you choose to have a degree and it fulfills you and then you choose retail as a career, that's a wonderful decision. Equally, if you're a school leaver and you have a thirst and a knowledge for um, this business, you can learn ground up. And I think that's just such a wonderful thing um, and talks to and speaks to the cost of education nowadays. So it opens mm -hmm. up a, a new career choice to, to others in my perspective. Um, and I think with new leadership and the acknowledgement of, you know, more women on boards and more brilliantly competent and open men on board to support women. I mean, Steve, my group CEO has been a brilliant champion for me. Um, you know, that encourages more visible leadership of women in the environment. And with change, change happens. Fresh skills, fresh knowledge, people seeing people that represent them. Um, it, it's all critical in, in change and making change happen. Yeah. Really, really good stuff. Now, finally, Sarah, we have a lot of risk, um, we have a lot of retailers that listen to this podcast. What advice would you give to them, to the leaders of this industry, to help them get more women in leadership roles? 
I think um, I would say you have to act with deliberateness. So, um, I mean, if I think about our, when I joined the M Brown um, executive board, we were a 50 50 split male female. Um, our brilliant female CFO left um, to go to the co-op and we replaced her with an equally brilliant male CFO. Um, but Steve, um, our group CEO, acted with absolute deliberateness on recruitment of a, a, a brilliant CPO who is female and uh, operations director who is also a woman, which is really exciting to me. So we're back to a great balance of um, wonderful female talent and um, our wonderful male colleagues. So acting with deliberate intent, I think, is critical. Um, I do the same in my teams. My watch out is my teams are quite female dominant and I think you need the balance of diversity of thinking. So I want to be fair to all. Um, I think our business thinks very carefully about the initiatives it launches. Um, and, you know, we've really um, been deliberate about launching a community strategy in M Brown because we're committed to building a diverse workforce and an inclusive environment. Um, and we've got basically five communities um, that represent for M Brown the core strands of diversity that exist within our business. And they're made up of a group of colleagues and leadership team who would like to step up as an ally for change. And they are spon all sponsored by an exec sponsor. And the five communities are women and allies, intergenerational and allies, multicultural and allies, LGBTQ plus and allies and accessibility and allies. So um, there's a really broad spectrum represented and they've really helped us to um, galvanise the business in, in delivering engaging content to our colleagues, um, building their awareness on important topics surrounding ED, IMB, um, you know, some examples are Ramadan, Passover, Black Inclusion Week, Pride Month, International Women's Day, and then really guidance for our communities based on tangible outputs and questions that they ask us. So, you know, sponsoring more affordable fertility care, which is something we've done, establishing a recruitment charter to integrate EDI and B within our talent cycle and promotion process, um, becoming signatories of the BRC uh, DNI charter, demonstrating our commitment to challenging culture and supporting the aspiration for retail to be a leader in EDI and B. Um, and, you know, we, we, the colleague mentoring program that I've, I've referenced already is a real tangible way of delivering change. Now, I think, um, the topic is so broad ranging, it can feel confusing, it can feel vast. So breaking it down into tangible differences that your business can see, I think is, is absolutely critical and has been super helpful for us as a business. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feel very proud that that was recognized by our Draper's diversity and inclusion award in November for the work we we've done recognizing oh, wow. that. Congrats. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, it was, it, you know, it's just, it's just what the team have delivered. And I think that we act with authenticity and we do the things that, we believe matter the most to our colleagues in a sort of deliberate and tangible way, just breaking it down as we go. Fantastic stuff. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. This is in, in a hugely important topic and I look forward to continuing it the is. conversation at the event in April. Thank you for listening to Retail Disrupted. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the podcast, please leave a rating or review or share it with others. It really makes a difference.